AC Variety takes pride in showcasing the stories that the big networks have no interest in telling. This is one of those stories. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a forest production of Arsenic and Old Lace. Please be sure to silence your cell phones, as the Brewster sisters are not fond of modern technologies in their home. Enjoy the show.
Just look at her, leaping over those gravestones. <laughs> Say, what's that? What's what, dear? See that statue there? That's a horn denied or Nina. Oh, no, dear. That's, I'm a big scout. I'm standing to heaven. No, no. Standing on Mrs. Spout's left ear. That, that bird. That's a red-crested swallow. I've only seen one of those before in my life. Well, I don't know how you'd be thinking about a bird. You didn't want Dr. Harper to see the bomb. Well, not the teeth. That 
That's right. I must be here. Aunt Abby and Martha, come in here. Oh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do about what, dear? Well, there's a body in there. Yes, Mr. Hoskins. Well, good heavens, I can't turn you over to the police, but, but what am I going to do? Well, for one thing, dear, stop being so excited. And for me's <laughs> sake, stop worrying. We told you to forget about the whole thing. But Mr. Hotchkiss can't. Hoskins, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Well, whatever his name is, you can't just leave him in there. We don't intend to, dear. No, Teddy's down at the cellar now, taking him along. <laughs> you mean you're going to bury Mr. Hostess in the cellar? Yes, dear, that's what we did with the others. Oh, you can't bury Mr. <laughs> others? Oh, the other gentlemen. When you say others, do you mean the others? More than one? Others? Yes, dear. Let's see. This is 11. Isn't it, Abby? No, this makes 12. Oh, I think you're wrong. This is only 11. Oh, this makes 12. Because when Mr. Hoskins first came in, and it to be that he would just an even dozen. Well, I really don't think you should count the first one. Oh, I was counting the first one. So that makes 12. Hello? Oh, hello, Al. My, it's good to hear your voice. Well, anyway, they're all down in the cellar. Shh. Oh, no, Al, I'm as sober as a lark. I just told you because I was feeling a little pure and mellow. Pure and, you wouldn't know, Al. Now, look, I'm glad you called. Get a hold of George right away. He's got to review the place now. Why can't be? No, Al, you're wrong. I'll tell you all about it tomorrow. Well, George has got to come to the place, man. You know, this is my performance and I'm running it. You get a hold of George. Where was I? Twelve? Yes, dear. Abby thinks you got to count the first one in. That makes sense. <laughs> okay.
lot to that. <laughs> what I mean is, well, this has developed into a very bad habit. We don't try to stop you from doing things you like to do. I don't see why you should interfere with us. <laughs> Dr. 
Dr. Einstein. And he's not Dr. Einstein either. Not Dr. <laughs> Albert Einstein. Dr. Herman Einstein. Who are you? You're not a nephew, Jonathan. I see you're still wearing the lovely garnet ring that Grandma Brewster bought in England. And you, Aunt Martha, still the high color to hide the scar where Grandfather's acid burned you. Brooklyn, 
I take the time to bring him here for one of Aunt Martha's home-cooked dinners. Oh, I'm oh, sorry, oh. there just won't be enough. Well, Abby, it's a pretty good-sized pot roast. Pot roast? I think the least we can do is... Thank you, Aunt Martha. We'll stay to dinner. Well, we'll hurry it along. Yes. Oh, Jonathan, if you'd like to freshen up, why don't you use the washroom in Grandfather's old laboratory? That's still there. Oh, yes, just as it was. Well, I'll go help get things started in the kitchen, since we're all in a hurry. <laughs> well, we need a meal anyway. Grandfather's laboratory. It's just as it was. Doctor, a perfect operating room. Who bad we can't use it. After you've finished with me, well, we can make a fortune here. Grandfather's laboratory, that large ward in the end, ten beds, Doctor. And Brooklyn is crying for your talents. Why work yourself up, Johnny? And for Brooklyn, I think we're a year too late. <laughs> you don't know this town, Doctor. Practically everybody in Brooklyn needs a new face. But so many of the old ones are locked up. A very small percentage. And the boys in Brooklyn are famous for paying generously to stay out of jail. Johnny, your aunts, they don't want us here. They're here for dinner, aren't you? Yeah, but after dinner? Leave it to me, Doctor. I'll handle it. Why? This house will be our headquarters for years. Oh, that would be wonderful. This nice, quiet house. Those lovely ants of yours. I love them already. I give them back. Yeah? Doctor, <laughs> we must wait until we're invited. What if they say no? Doctor, two are helpless old women. It comes true. A beautiful dream. Only, I hope you're not dreaming. Ah, it's so peaceful. That's what makes this house so perfect for us, Doctor. So peaceful. Uh. <laughs> Now, Ted, not to Panama. We 
to go some other time. Panama's a long way off. Oh, nonsense. It's just down in the cellar. The cellar? Oh, we let him take the Panama Canal in the cellar. General, as President of the United States, and Commander-in-Chief of the Army, and Navy, and the man who gave you this job, I command <laughs> you accompany me on the inspection of the new lock. Teddy! I think it's time you went to bed. I beg your pardon? Who are you? I'm Woodrow Wilson. Go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> You're not Wilson. Look, your face is familiar. Not someone I know now. Perhaps later. On my hunting trip to Africa. Yes, you look like someone that made me the jungle. It's your brother Jonathan. Ooh. He's had his face changed. So that's it. A nature face. Then perhaps you had better go to bed, Teddy. Jonathan and his friend had better get back to their hotel. General Gothels, inspect the canal. All right, Mr. President, we got the Panama. That's the bullet. Just the bullet. Follow me, General. It's down south, you know. <laughs> Well? Bon voyage! I tell you, I must correct your misapprehension. You spoke of our hotel. We have no hotel. We came directly here. Oh, here's a very nice little hotel just three blocks. And Martha, this is my home. But Jonathan, you can't stay here. We need our rooms. You need them? Yes, for our lodgers. <coughs> Well, there are lodgers in this house. Well, not just now, but we plan to have some. Then my old room is still free. But then there's no place for Dr. Einstein. He'll share the room with me. No, Jonathan, I'm afraid you can't stay here. Dr. Einstein and I need some place to sleep. You remembered this afternoon that as a boy I could be disagreeable. Wouldn't be very pleasant for any of us. Perhaps we'd better let them stay the night. Well, just for the night. Then that's settled. Now, if you'll get my room ready. It only needs carrying out. We keep it ready to show our lodgers. We hope that you and Dr. Einstein will find it comfortable. You have a most distinguished guest in Dr. Einstein. I'm afraid you don't appreciate his skill, but you will. In a few weeks, you'll see me looking like a very different Jonathan. Well, he can't operate on you here. When Dr. Einstein and I get organized, when we resume practice, I'm... Oh, I forgot to tell you. Dr. Einstein and I are turning Grandfather's laboratory into an operating room. We expect to be quite busy. Jonathan, we will not let you turn this house into a hospital. A hospital? That means no. It will be a beauty parlor. <laughs> hey, Johnny, down in the cell! Dr. Einstein, my dear aunts have invited us to live with them. Oh, you fixed it! For the night. Please, get our room ready immediately. Well, for the night. Johnny, when I go down into the cellar, what do you think I find? What? The Panama Canal! The Panama Canal! It's a whole teddy dog. Just fits Mr. Spinozzo. Six feet long, four feet wide. Down there. You think they knew we were bringing Mr. Spinozzo along? That's hospitality! <laughs> you joke on my hands. They're living in a house with a body buried in the cellar. How? <laughs> How do we get in? Yes, we can't just walk him in through the door. We'll bring the car up between the house and the cemetery. Then, when they've gone to bed, we'll bring Mr. Spinozzo in through the window. Oh, bed. Just think, we've got a bed tonight. Uh, easy, doctor. Remember, you're operating tomorrow. And this time, you better be sober. I fix you up. Beautiful. And if you don't. Jonathan, your room is ready. You can go right up. Then you two can go to bed. We're bringing the car up behind the house. It's all right where it is until morning. I don't want to leave it in the street. That might be against the law. <coughs> What 
Well, we can't let them stay in this house for more than one night. For one thing, what would the neighbors think? People coming in here with one face and leaving with another? <laughs> what are we going to do about Mr. Hoskins? Oh, he's been waiting so patiently in the morning. <laughs> it can't be very comfortable for him in there. You better get Teddy to take him out of Panama right away. Abby, I will not invite Jonathan to the services. Oh, we'll wait until they've gone to bed, then come down to home services. General Goldfuss was very pleased. He said the canal is just the right size. Teddy? Teddy, there's been another yellow fever victim. Dear me, this will be a shock to the general. Well, then we mustn't tell him about it. But it's his department. No, we mustn't tell him. It would just spoil his visit. I'm sorry, Abby. It's out of my hands. He'll have to be told. Army regulations. No, he must keep a secret, yes. A state secret? Yes, a state secret. Promise? As President of the United States, I cross my heart and hope to die. Now, how are we going to keep the secret? Well, you go down into the cellar, and when I turn out the lights, when it's all dark, you come back up and take the poor man down to the canal, and we'll come down later and hold services. You may announce the President will say a few words. Where is the board up? Well, he's in the window. Seems to be spreading. We've never had it we there before. <laughs> Michael, when Jonathan and Dr. Einstein come back, let's see if we can get them to go to bed right away. Yes, but by the time they're asleep, we'll be dressed and ready for the services. Mm. Abby, I've never even seen Mr. Hoskins. Oh, that's right, you were out. Well, you just come and see him now. He's really quite nice looking for a Methodist. <laughs> <laughs> We're bringing the luggage through here. Your room is ready. You can go right up. Then you two can go to bed. I'm afraid we don't keep Brooklyn hours. Now you must be very tired, both of you. And we don't go to bed this early. Well, you should. It's time I came home to take care of you. Well, we weren't planning to go until after. And Martha, did you hear me say, go to bed? The instruments can go to the laboratory in the morning. Now then, we are all going to bed. I'll wait until you're up and then I'll turn out the lights. Another flight, Doctor. Very <coughs> long, Aunt Martha. All right, Aunt Abby. I'll be right up. Now, Aunt Abby, turn out the lights.
Who are you? I'm only Cuthbert. I live next door. Then what are you doing here? I came over to see Miss Sammy and Miss Martha. Turn on the lights, Doctor. You chose rather an untimely moment for a social call. I think you'd better explain what you're doing here. We happen to live here. You don't live here. I'm in this house every day and I've never seen you before. Where is Abby, Miss Martha? What have you done to that? Perhaps we better introduce ourselves. This is Dr. Einstein. Dr. Einstein? A surgeon of great distinction. And something of a magician. And I suppose you're going to tell me your voice. I'm Jonathan Brewster. Oh, you're Jonathan. Oh, I see you've heard of me. Yes, just this afternoon for the first time. And what did they say about me? Just that there was another brother named Jonathan, that's all. Well, that explains everything. Now that I know who you are, I'll be running along. You'll kindly unlock the door. That explains everything. Just what did you mean by that? Why did you come here at this time of night? I thought I saw someone crawling around the house. I suppose it was you. Thought you saw someone prowling around the house. Yes. Were you outside? Isn't that your car? You saw someone at the car. Yes. What else did you see? Just that. That's all. What else did you see? Just that. I was going to tell my daddy to call the police, but if it was you and that's your car, then I don't need to bother with Sammy. I'll be running along. I think you're lying. I think she tells the truth. We let her go now, huh? I think she's lying. Breaking into a house at this time of the night. I think she's dangerous. She shouldn't be allowed around loose. Ah, take your hands off me! It's going to be a private funeral. Teddy, Teddy, <laughs> tell me what I'm going to do. You're my dog, Alice. I can 
Robin. <laughs> Let me think of our friend, Mr. Spinalzo. Spinalzo. Well, now, Mortimer, it really isn't necessary to inconvenience you like this. We'll sleep down here. Jonathan, your sudden consideration for me is very unconvincing. Johnny, let's go pack our things, eh? And don't bother, Doctor. By the way, Doctor, I've completely lost track of Mr. Spinoza. Who is this Mr. Spinoza? Uh, just a friend of ours Johnny's been looking for. But don't bring anyone else in here. <laughs> well, let's get our things out of the room, eh? Come on. Oh, Mortimer, you don't have to stay down here. I can go with Martha and you can take my room. No trouble at all, Aunt Abby. We'll be packed in a few minutes, so then you can have the room, Mortimer. You're just wasting your time! I told you I'm sleeping down here! Mortimer! <laughs> What's the matter, dear? I've almost been killed! Almost been killed! Abby and Martha! <laughs> Come 
in here. We'll be in in a minute, dear. Come in here now. <laughs> yes, dear, what is it? Oh, where's the knife? Thought you promised me not to let anyone in this house while I was gone. Well, Jonathan. I don't mean Jonathan. And Dr. Einstein. I don't mean Dr. Einstein. Who's in that window seat? We told you, Mr. Hoskins. This is not Mr. Hoskins. <laughs> Who can that be? <laughs> Are you trying to tell me that you've never seen that man before? I certainly am. This is a fine how do you do. It's getting so anyone thinks he can walk into this house. So I tell you, don't you try to get out of this. That's another one of your gentlemen. Mortimer, how can you say such a thing? This man's an imposter. And if he came here to be buried in our cellar, he's mistaken. Can you admit to me that you put Mr. Hoskins in the window seat? Yes, I did. Well, this man couldn't have just got the idea from Mr. Hoskins. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, uh, where is Mr. Hoskins? Oh, he must have gone to Panama. Oh, you buried him? No, not yet. He just stood out there waiting for the services. We haven't had a minute but with Jonathan in the house. Oh, I've always wanted to hold a double funeral. But I would not read services over a total stranger. A stranger? And to have any help, I believe you. There are 12 men in the cellar, and you admit you poisoned them. Yes, I did. But you don't think I'd stoop to telling fib? Martha! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Martha. I'd like to have a word with you. I and the words about all you have time for, Jonathan, because I've decided that you and your doctor friend are going to have to get out of this house just as quickly as possible. I'm glad you recognize the fact that you and I can't live under the same roof, but you've arrived at the wrong solution. Take your suitcase and get out! Oh, oh. Jonathan! <laughs> no, you're beginning to bore me. You played your one night stand in Brooklyn and move on! My dear Mortimer, just because you graduated from the back fence to the typewriter, don't think you've grown up. I'm staying, and you're leaving. And I leave now. Don't you think I can be friends if you think there's anything that I feel? I've lived a strange life, Mortimer. But it's taught me one thing to be afraid of nothing. Martha, just look and see what's in that window seat. No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, let I go to see what's in the window seat. <laughs> Aunt Abby, I owe you an apology. I have very good news for you. Jonathan is leaving. He's taking Dr. Einstein in there. Cold companion with him. <clears throat> Jonathan, you're my brother. You're a Brewster. I'm going to give you a chance to get away and take the evidence with you. You can't ask for more than that. Very well, in that case, I'll have to call the police. Don't reach for that telephone! Are you still giving me orders after seeing what's happened to Mr. Spinozo? Spinozo? I knew he was a fork. Remember, <laughs> what happened to Mr. Spinalzo can happen to you, too. Hello, Miss Abby. Oh, Officer O'Hare, is there something we can do for you? Oh, I saw your lights on. I thought there might be a sickness in the house. You've got to help me. I'll just go. No, no, come on in. Yes, come in. Come right in, Officer O'Hara. This is our nephew, Mortimer. Please meet you. And this is another nephew, Jonathan. Please make your acquaintance. Well, must be nice to have your nephews visiting you. Are they going to stay for a bit? I'm, I'm staying. My brother Jonathan is just leaving. I've met you before, haven't I? I'm afraid not. Jonathan hasn't been on for years. Oh, your face looks familiar to me. Maybe I've just seen a picture of him somewhere. I don't think so. And yes, I hurry if I were you, Jonathan. Your things are all packed anyway, aren't they? Well. You'll be wanting to say your goodbyes. I'll be running along. Oh, what's the rush? I'd like to have you stick around until my brother goes. Well, I just stopped in to make sure everything was all right. Oh, we're going to have some coffee in a few minutes, so won't you join us? Oh, I forgot the coffee. Now I'll make some more sandwiches. <laughs> I want to know your appetite by this time, Officer O'Hara. Don't bother.
father. I'm due to ring it in a few minutes. I, you can have a cup of coffee with us. My brother won't be gone soon. Here, sit down. Say, can I see a photograph of your brother around here someplace? Yeah, I don't think so. He certainly reminds me of somebody. Well, it, it looks like somebody you may have seen in the movies. I never go to the movies. I hate them. Mother says the movies is a bastard. Huh? <laughs> yeah, it's full of them. Uh, your mother said that? Yeah, my mother was an actress, a stage actress. Perhaps you've heard of her. Peaches Latour. Well, sounds like a name I've seen on a program. What did she play? Well, her big hit was Mutt and Jeff. Played it for three years. I was born on tour, the third season. You were? Yep, Sioux City, Iowa. I was born in the dressing room at the end of the second act. The mother made the finale. What a trip, <laughs> man. There must be a good story in your mother. You know, I write about them, Peter. You do? Say, you're not more of a Bruce of the dramatic critic. Yes. Well, I certainly am glad to meet you. <laughs> Say, Mr. Brewster, we're in the same line of business. <coughs> we are? Yeah, I'm a playwright. Oh, this being on the force is just temporary. How long have you been on the force? Twelve years. I'm collecting material for a play. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet it's a honey. Well, it ought to be. With all the drama I see being the cup, Mr. Brewster, you've got no idea what goes on in Brooklyn. Yeah, I think I have. Hey, say what time you got. Ten after one. Gee, I gotta bring in. Uh, well, wait a minute, O'Hara. On, on that play of yours, I may be able to help you. You would? Say it's my fake walking here tonight. Look, I'll tell you the plot. Oh! You're on your way, eh? Good. You haven't got much time, you know. Well, everything's just about ready. Oh, you're leaving, Jonathan? Goodbye. Goodbye, Dr. Einstein. Doesn't this case belong to you? Uh, yes, Jonathan. You can't go without all your things. Well, O'Hara, it was nice to meet you. I'll see you again and we'll talk about your play. I'm not leaving now, Mr. Mister. <coughs> Why not? You offered to help me my play, didn't you? Uh, you and I are going to write my play together. O'Hara, oh, I can't do that. You know, I'm not a creative writer. I'll do the creating. You just put the words to it. But O'Hara... No, sir, Mr. Brewster. I ain't leaving this house till I tell you the plot. Well, Mortimer, in that case, we'll be on our way. Now, don't try that. You can't go there. You've got to take everything with you, you know. Well, O'Hara, <laughs> you're on the long now, eh? My brother's just going. I can wait. I've been waiting 12 years. I'm sorry, I'm so long. Well, don't bring it in here, huh? <laughs> O'Hara, would you join us for a bite in the kitchen? The kitchen? Jonathan's leaving. Well, that's nice. Come along, Officer O'Hara. Sure you don't mind meeting in the kitchen, Mr. O'Hara? And where else would you eat? Well, goodbye, Jonathan. It was nice seeing you again. I'm glad you came back to Brooklyn, Jonathan, because it gives me a chance to throw you out. The first one out is your boyfriend, Mr. Spinoza. Look, Mr. Brewster, we can talk to you. Don't come in right now! <laughs> <laughs> I might have known you'd grow up to write a play with a policeman. Get going now, all three of you. <clears throat> Doctor. This affair between my brother and me has got to be settled. Johnny, your brother gives us a chance to get away. What more could you ask for? You don't understand. This goes back a good many years. Now, Johnny, let's get going. We're not going. We're sleeping right here tonight. With a cop in the kitchen and Mr. Spinoza in the window seat. That's all he's got on us. <laughs> we'll bring Mr. Spinoza down and dump him in the bay and come right back here. And then, if he tries to interfere... Johnny! Doctor, you know when I make up my mind... Yeah, you lose your head. Brooklyn needs such a good place for you. Doctor! Okay. We got to stick together. But some days we get stuck together. <coughs> if we're coming back here, do we have to take these? No. Leave them here. Hide them in the cellar. Move fast. <sighs> Mr. Spinalzo can go out the same way he came in. Hey, Johnny, come quick! What's the matter? Well, you know that hole in the cellar? Yes. Well, we got the ace in the hole. Oh, 
didn't sleep, that bed feels good already. Let's go to sleep, yes? You're forgetting, doctor. What? My brother, Mortimer. You can do that tomorrow, or the next day. No, tonight, now. Tony, please, I'm tired. And tomorrow I got to operate. Yes, doctor, you're operating tomorrow. Tonight, we take care of Mortimer. Johnny, they go to bed, yes? Doctor, look at my face. You can see it's going to be done, can't you? Y yes, Johnny, I can see. I know that look. It's a little late for us to dissolve our partnership. OK, we do it, but the quick way. The quick twist like a landing. Ah! <laughs> no, Doctor. This has got to be something special. I think perhaps the Melbourne method. No, not the Melbourne method, Charlie. Two hours! And when it was all over, the fellow in landing was just as dead as the fellow in Melbourne. <laughs> we had to work too quickly in London. There was no aesthetic satisfaction to it for Melbourne. Ah, there was something to remember. Remember? I, I wish I didn't. For Johnny, not Melbourne, not me. Yes, you, doctor. Where are the instruments? No, Johnny, I won't do it. Where are the instruments? No, Johnny, I won't. Oh. You hid them in the cellar. Where? I won't tell you. I'll find a doctor. What up, no don'ts? Do that, Mr. President. Well, I have to call a cabinet meeting to sign any proclamation. No, but this must be a secret. A secret proclamation? How unusual. Well, Japan must not know it, so it's signed. Japan. Those devils. I'll sign it right away. Stop my word. The cabinet can go later. Yeah, so let's go and sign it. You wait here. The secret proclamation has to be signed against secret. Yeah, but at once, Mr. President. Uh, what am I signing? Oh, let's see. You go now, eh? No, Doctor. I'm waiting for something. Something important. No. You go now. Dr. Einstein, you seem to be a nice enough fellow. I'm nothing against you personally. Take my advice and get out of this house and get just as far away as possible. Trouble? Yeah! You get away quick! All right, don't say any more, Blue. I warn you, you! Get out! Things are going to start popping around here any minute. Listen, Johnny's in a bad mood. When he gets like this, he's a... he's a madman. Things happen. Terrible things. A Donovan doesn't worry me now. Doc Hebert! Don't those plays teach you anything? About what? Well, Hebert and Blaze act like they got some sense. That's more than you do. Oh, you think a Hebert and Blaze act intelligently? Oh, I wish you had to see some of the ones I have to sit through. No, take the little Opus I saw tonight, for instance. No one this play this is fanny He's supposed to be right. He knows he's in a house with murderers. He ought to know he's in danger. He's even been warned to get out of the house. But does he go? No. He stays there. Now I ask you, doctor, is that what an intelligent person will do? You're asking me? He doesn't even have sense enough to be afraid, you know, to be on guard. For instance, the murderer invites him to sit down. Oh, so you mean that guy? Won't you sit down? Believe it or not, that one was in there, too. Wait, what did you do? We sat down. Now, mind you, this fellow's supposed to be bright. A scenario sits. The big dog, you know, the fellow who's supposed to be bright, just waiting to be trussed up. And what are you supposed to use to time up with? What? The curtain cord. Then why not? Very convenient. A little too convenient. What are playwrights going to start using some of imagination? The curtain cords. Well, he didn't see him get it. See him? He sat there with his back to him. Now, mind you, this fellow's supposed to be right. A scenarist, the big dope. The fellow who is supposed to be right. Now, just waiting to be trussed up and dead. Whoa! What are you? Oh!
Canada, he wasn't very bright. <laughs> Now, Mortimer, if you don't mind, we'll finish the story. I've been away twenty years, Mortimer, but never once in all that time, my dear brother, were you out of my mind. In the Melbourne one night, I dreamed of you. When I landed in San Francisco, I felt a strange satisfaction. Once again, I was in the same country with you. Then, all of a sudden, through the window, in comes Mayor Lebron. 
Concordia. Get that guy 
way out of here? Hey, if there's any question of spies, that's my department. You keep out of this. You're forgetting as president of the United States Muscle Head of the Secret Service. Doesn't belong here. We'll have to leave 
I need some coffee. No. I've had quite a night. Well, I should see if you want to get to bed. I do.
Thank you. 